The Rock, tall buildings, power cranes, jumping. We have your review of Skyscraper right here on Screen Junkies News. Hi, I'm Dan Merle, and I'm joined by a very special co-reviewer. He's normally behind the board, <laughs> yeah. but today he's in front of the camera. You know, when someone says Die Hard ripoff, I jump out of that booth as quick as possible because I have a lot of thoughts. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, Skyscraper is in theaters today. Dwayne The Rock Johnson returns as Dwayne The Rock Johnson yep. in a burning <laughs> building. Uh, he is the newly formed head of security to, uh, it does it, you know, it doesn't matter. There's it a burning really, building really and he's work. running around and, and jumping out of things. Uh, and there's yeah. fireballs and people shooting at each other. JTE, what did you think of this movie? You know, people are saying Die Hard a lot, which I totally get. But Towering Inferno is definitely in here also. And yeah. they even did like an exclusive poster for both those films to kind of like make this look like a vintage one of those movies. Mm -hmm. And it really is a mix of both, yet it doesn't pull off either really yeah. in a lot of ways. The Die Hard thing, I'm not upset when someone says, hey, there's a Die Hard ripoff. You know what? Speed. Die Hard on a Bus. Yeah. Cliffhanger. Die Hard on a Mountain. Yeah. Uh, Under Siege. Die Hard on a Sub. Die Hard on a Sub. I'm okay with that. Like, it's a good premise. Die Hard has a good premise. If you One could man against the world. Exactly. Someone we can relate to or somebody who's, oh my God, this is just a regular guy, but he's turned out to be a badass Special Forces dude. Yeah. I'm okay with that. But you got to put, if not something new, at least really well told actors, characters, set pieces. The thing about Die Hard Every one of the characters in that movie who's like supporting John McClane, mm -hmm. Bruce Willis, it's really good. Yeah. Like they're memorable. They're they're entertaining to watch. Ellis. Ellis, I uh, mean Family Matters dead. Yeah, What's yeah Al Powell. Uh, Al, even yeah. Ar Argyle. Like Argyle, he has such great. a small role, but great. Everyone besides, in my opinion, The Rock and Nev Campbell mm -hmm. is completely forgettable in this movie. Yeah. And is just a, basically a cutout standee of what they're supposed to be. Yeah, uh, I walked out of this thinking, uh, going, oh, dumb Die Hard. Because yeah. that's what it is. It's Die Hard, but stupider. Um, I'm inspired, too, in a lot of ways. Yeah, uh, that, well, that's the thing. And here's here's what I'm kind of, because I feel like I'm saying the same thing about this movie as I said about Rampage, as I yeah. said about, uh, thought about San Andreas and some of these other ones. Is like, The Rock is a great movie star. Great. He's got charisma. He so has charisma. presence. Yep. He is funny. He he can't. He's getting better at, at acting dramatically. He mm -hmm. actually doesn't do a lot of funny stuff in this movie. It's it's kind no. of a dr more dramatic turn from him, and he's not yep. terrible at it. No, nope. but he keeps attaching himself to projects that are just that only work if he's in them. And you know that's a credit to him as a personality mm -hmm. that he can take these kind of bland, forgettable movies and hold them together through just like sheer personality and charisma like that's what movie stars do but yeah. at the same time it's like you, the, the dude's got to get better movies because these movies are not good and yeah. he he's really what makes them watchable working on that is here's the thing i was thinking about it he needs to start finding some directors that have a vision yeah i you look at arnold schwarzenegger he found james cameron yeah and james cameron was like listen you might not be the greatest actor in the world but i'm going to make these great spectacle action movies that play to your strengths he hasn't found that. He's done these kind of like journeyman directors who start in commercials and music videos. He hasn't really teamed up with like a great director. I mean, Michael Bay is like one of the biggest name directors he's worked with yeah. in Pain and Gain, but that was barely a Michael Bay movie. That was like him doing something different. Yeah. I need to see him like starring, find some directors who we know are well established and have a distinct style that they could make him flourish in. Yeah. I, I'm just tired of these like for the higher, I mean, I, the director isn't like a bad director. It's comfortably made as far as like visually, yeah. the set pieces look okay, but th they're just kind of like these directors who don't bring anything to the film except for getting the job done for it being a rock. It work, it's worksmanship. It's like, work, it's, yeah. yeah, it's, it's yeah. competently directed, but it's not well written. Oh, it's, it's, um, and it's written by the director. So predictable. Uh, it's so predictable. It is so like when it's not just complete tropes and, mm -hmm. and you've seen it a thousand times before. You know who the bad guy is. You know who the traitor is. There's yeah. the, there's a scene and I hate this. I hate it's so lazy. There's a scene in the beginning of the film where they take him to a room and the room is set up. It's this, it has this weird stuff in it that mm -hmm. it's just like it's like, oh, yeah, look what this room can do. And it's like this thing happens and you're like, 
Why would you yeah. ever design a room to do this? And then, of course, yeah. it's because they're going to have to set the finale inside in this room. room. And the, for the finale to work inside this room, then this stuff has to be yeah. in the room. And it's like, but that that room it just, just feels lazy screenwriting. It, it's lazy screenwriting. And it's kind of like Trope 101. It's like a horror movie when you see like, oh, there's a creepy doll introduced in the first five minutes of the movie. I wonder if there's going to be a scare with that doll like an hour later. Right. But this is like on a much larger scale. Like that room has no practical purpose, really. Yeah. They, I mean, it's just literally there for someone to show off and then again yeah you're like i don't want to spoil what it is exactly but right. it's even i've seen other movies do it before i've seen so many there's other a movies classic do movie from the 70s yeah that i'm like okay you're doing an updated version of this but they didn't bring anything that new to it they yeah. just did it um i mean it's, it's, when i'm thinking of like <laughs> i didn't like this movie like mm -hmm. i wouldn't recommend people to see i didn't hate it either yeah it's just there was it. absolutely nothing special about it to me other than you have a great star, but that's not enough for yeah. me to say go see this movie. I, but you know, if you if you like San Andreas, mm -hmm. if you liked Rampage, like you, I would, li this would be did, like the most forgettable three movie marathon. Did you it's like, exactly like these? Did two. you say you like this more Rampage? Because I think I like this a little bit more than Rampage, and I'll say why. Rampage is dumb, yeah, and I think they know it's dumb, but it was almost so dumb that. I just wasn't on board. The first 30 minutes of this movie, they actually do try to establish The Rock as a character. Uh -huh. And he's gone through some stuff where I'm like, okay, he's not just some zookeeper who happens to be like an ex-Navy SEAL and is all of a sudden working with the government. Like, they do a decent job of making The Rock who looks like this Hercules god. Yeah. It's a somewhat of a normal like guy that you kind of like, oh, wow, I feel for him a little bit. So for the first 30 minutes, I was like, okay, they're setting it up well. But once he gets to the actual skyscraper, it just becomes so bland and predictable and just even the set pieces while they're like you said commonly shot nothing really stood out to me there's not one sequence where i'm like oh my god that's amazing i actually liked rampage a little bit more because really? okay. it, it, i think when i reviewed it i said like i'm not going to tell you not to go see it i think was what i said Sorry. about rampage but at the same time you know it's not that i necessarily liked the movie but it was so stupid and ridiculous that it did in a way kind of play into the rock a little bit more this was hmm just uh, you know again like he's doing the best that he can yeah and they try to do some stuff with this character you know he's an amputee which you know at first i'm like okay well this is good that you're sort of you are you are showing that uh, you know somebody who's had this this trauma go through life mm -hmm. is not affecting who they are uh and and, and they actually use that mm -hmm. what some would say is a disability to their advantage so it's like half that but then the other half is me just saying like did they just need something to write into the script to create suspense and they're like let's just give him one leg so maybe he'll it'll come off at an, an opportune moment yeah. like i don't it was a little it bit is of both. a trick it is a little bit trick yeah. but at least it worked a little bit for me yeah and i will say this i thought nev campbell was fun in this for the most part and i thought her character isn't just a damsel in distress like she actually actively she gets to go get, yeah, mix it up a little bit. She gets yeah. to mix it up a little bit, which I thought was refreshing because a lot of times these movies, that's not the case. Yeah. And once you find out the history of not just him, but her, I thought that was at least kind of cool. Yeah. But again, outside of Campbell in the rock, there's not one memorable role in this movie. Yeah. Like even your villain, at least give me somewhat of interesting villain. And the way they describe like the reason the criminals are there. Yeah. It was kind of just stupid and didn't really make sense. No. Uh, so I would say if you liked Rampage, if you liked San Andreas, yep. then you'll probably like this movie because it's mm -hmm. pretty much exactly the same thing. If you didn't like these movies, uh, I don't think that you'll like this one either. And yeah. if you're looking for a good summer action movie, I say uh, wait a little bit till Mission Impossible comes out because yeah. that is a great action movie. We reviewed it here on the channel. Can't wait to see it. You, sh you can get your action fix with Mission Impossible. You don't have to go see this one. Mm -hmm. uh, so not a recommendation for me, but I will say that if you like these other movies that The Rock has done in recent years in the summer, then you'll probably like this one. Yeah, I mean, for me, it is a recommendation if you just enjoy The Rock for the most part. And it's a dumb matinee movie. I don't think you should be going paying AMC Prime or whatever. Or like full, or X IMAX 3D, Yeah, IMAX 4 know, no. XD. Matinee, this is like, I have movie pass. This is easy movie pass movie for me. Yeah. I felt fine spending an hour and 40 minutes watching it. Because, like I said, The Rock, I think, is actually trying in this movie. Mm -hmm. And they do actually do a decent job of giving him a backstory. They actually got me to care a little bit more for The Rock than I thought I would. But they didn't go anywhere with it. Yeah. And the action to me is pretty lazy. And some of it is just so dumb.
Some of the yeah, it's so dumb. I can't. I wish we were doing spoiler reviews because yeah. I could talk about thirty minutes about some of the dumbest things in this movie. Really, really stupid things. Okay, yeah. that's our thoughts on skyscraper in theaters. Now, what did you think of the movie? You can go see it right now. Or do you think we're completely wrong? Let us know in the comments below. As always, thanks for watching the Screen Junkies News, and stay tuned because not only will we be bringing you re reviews of the latest movies coming out in theaters, but starting next week we will be providing coverage oh, yeah. live from San Diego. <laughs> starting next Thursday uh, of everything that's happening at San Diego Comic-Con, so be sure to tune in for that. JT, thanks for joining me. Thanks, guys. Um, I love talking action movies. I can't wait to see Mission Impossible. That's what I thought about halfway through this movie. God, I can't wait for Mission Impossible. It's really good. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.